So I'm sitting in math class the other day and my friend nudges my shoulder and shows me her phone. Displayed on the screen is a community discussion on my anime list about how Spy X Family has become the third highest rated anime on the site, surpassing Attack on Titan Season 3 Part 2. I respond, oh yeah, that happens with new shows. I then spend the rest of class thinking, Actually, it kind of doesn't. What's going on? Even if the score goes down to what would be considered normal for a new seasonal show, and I do expect that to happen, I feel like I'll still be left wondering why it got so high to begin with. Now, your first reaction upon seeing this show's success might be to point to its winning of the 2019 Web Manga Edition of the Next Manga Award, an award that is given to the hottest new manga of each year which were hosted on the Katakawa Corporation's Da Vinci Magazine and Nico Nico streaming website. This is the award that called the success of popular manga My Senpai is Annoying, Life Lessons with Uramichi Onisan, Tomachan is a Girl, Wotakoi Love is Hard for Otaku, as well as, most notably, Kaguya-sama Love is War and My Hero Academia. But not only had none of the adaptations of those manga topped the charts like Spy X Family is doing, but all of them sit at a lower community-given score than their manga counterparts. Tomachan as a girl didn't even receive an anime adaptation. But okay, maybe it's just that Spy X Family is a new show by two popular studios. Well, Cloverworks is definitely still in the process of repairing their reputation of dropping the ball on a good show after the Promised Neverland and Wonder Egg priority, and which studio's other highest claim to fame is Attack on Titan Season 3 Part 2. And with shows like Attack on Titan, I think it makes more sense that they are so highly rated because it has been building and building up to the point that it is at now for almost a decade. And most everyone agrees that the anime adaptation has been consistently stellar thus far. And when you have so many seasons of a show, you're going to be filtering out people who aren't interested in it, leading to higher average scores. The other example that comes to my mind as a show that hit the top of the charts seemingly out of nowhere is Interspecies Reviewers, but that show had a huge amount of drama surrounding it when it first released because multiple streaming services services dropped it, or changed its airing schedule, or stopped producing subtitles for it, or some combination of all of those. Most notably was Funimation entirely removing it from their streaming library after deciding that the series falls out of their standards. And in response to these events, large crowds of people expressed their discontent over these companies' decision as well as their support of the show by publicly praising it as much and as loudly as they could, which meant giving it a 10 out of 10 on Mal to boost its reach. This is why Interspecies Reviewers is based basically the only show on the entire platform that doesn't have a bell curve shaped community score graph. But I don't feel like Spy X Family really fits either of those bills. The closest it comes to the level of drama interspecies reviewers saw was some random guy on TikTok who seems to think that the presence of a female child blushing in an anime is suspect to promoting child predation, which is not only so laughably ridiculous that it can barely be described as drama, but also requires that you completely wipe the resurgence of Dragon Maid haters and in response Dragon Maid fans last year from your memory, and the manga doesn't seem to be receiving particularly strong praise from the crowd who has read it. I mean, it is very positive, but that really isn't anything out of the ordinary, especially for manga that get anime adaptations. They likely wouldn't be getting an anime adaptation if they weren't already seeing at least moderate success in manga form. And not to interrupt everyone's dance party over this show, but I don't think the Spy X Family anime is that good. It's enjoyable, but it's not this amazingly executed show with an ingenious premise as so many people seem to be worshipping it as. That's not me saying the premise is lazy or that I've seen another one exactly like it, but I am certainly not blown away by the creativity on display by any means. Spies are a popular type of character to make a story about, and a very common theme with these types of undercover agents is that they start to form a genuine bond with the people they should be focused entirely on deceiving. Moreover, anime is, and has been for a long time, packed to the gills with espers, especially children who possess psychic abilities. And with mind reading being an extremely common psychic ability, it shouldn't have taken that much creativity to imagine how these tropes might interact with one another. Mind reading inherently subverts duplicity, which is the profession of a spy, and children are inherently one of the easiest types of people to become emotionally attached to. It is unique and creative, but not surprisingly or extraordinarily so so, in my opinion. But it's not just the premise thing that I don't get. Every review I've seen or read also praises the comedy of this show, and this is yet another area where I have to say that it's pretty funny. Definitely very funny for anime standards coming from the perspective of an American, but it's not like space dandy levels of funny. The only laugh out loud moment for me so far has been your looking turned on by the sight of a guillotine. And since I'm on the topic, the joke of your being obsessed with killing and blades and stuff is pretty funny, but also kind 
kind of introduces a massive plot hole into the show. Why is Lloyd not at all suspicious of this woman? How am I supposed to think that he's the greatest spy of all time if he can't detect this woman's obvious fixation on killing? And because mind reading subverts duplicity, it makes it borderline impossible for the show to hide anything from the audience so long as it's within proximity to Anya. So unless we're just not seeing her reacting to Lloyd's inner monologue about how suspicious Yor is being, or there's some change in how her powers work in the future, I think this is a criticism that should be relevant no matter what happens later on in the manga, which might get adapted. What I'm trying to say is that the comedy, while reasonably effective, does come at a price. And that's totally normal and doesn't break the experience. Look, I don't want to nitpick Spy X Family all day like this. I'm not trying to knock it down a peg or convince everyone else why it's actually bad. I'm just trying to not come across as unreasonable when I say that I don't think Spy X Family is really all that special. But do not let the wool be pulled over your eyes. I am in no way upset that Spy X Family has achieved the acclaim that it has achieved. I am extremely happy that based Based on the ratings, it seems to be being enjoyed so much by so many people. So I guess this is a genuine question to anyone having as much fun with the show as the score would suggest. Why do you like Spy X Family so much? I'm happy that you do, but I'm also genuinely confused, and I want to be able to recognize when a future upcoming show might also top the charts like this. And if you want to go undercover yourself and infiltrate my Discord server, there's a hidden underground railway that'll take you there, and the toll gate is only $3. Hurry before the UN finds out!